Um, so what I'm going to do is um, try and give you a broad overview of uh, work going on in the uh, College of Arts, Law and Education, um, but then move quite quickly uh, to the research I've been doing on the political economy of sustainability. Um, the reasons for that is that um, I think I've been working in this area for quite some time, so I think I'd, it's a good idea to share some ideas with you, given the nature of the topic, but also because um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a uh, a senior management figure in the College of Arts and Law and Education, and so I'm a little uncomfortable speaking on behalf of the college. Is that going to... What does that do? Turns it off. Oops, there we go. Um, so the College of Arts, Law, and Education is a, a very new college, um, like all the colleges. <laughs> um, it seems that we uh, get a new uh, faculty or uh, uh, school uh, every year. Um, so it brings together, um, obviously, the former Faculty of Arts and the Faculty of uh, Law and Education into one large college. And what I've tried to do there is just give you a, an overview of, uh, of the structure as it is today. So uh, there are these um, five uh, schools slash faculties. Um, um, the uh, former faculty of education is now part of the college along with the former faculty of law. They're both still titled faculties for professional reasons. And then we've got uh, the School of Humanities, Creative Arts, and uh, Social Sciences. Uh, there's just uh, an enormous amount and variety of uh, individual uh, and collective research going on in the college. It's almost impossible to summarize. What I've done um, is just to give you a kind of overview of the structure of the college, uh, uh, as well as highlight some of the uh, research centers that, um, that are in existence. Now, that's by no means all the research centers. Uh, but you can see that there's interesting things going on uh, relevant to TIA in law, um, in terms of genetics, um, in education, in terms of their focus on maths education, uh, in terms of humanities, in terms of historical studies, um, uh, as well as uh, uh, particularly, I think, the uh, uh, School of Creative Arts, which is doing some really interesting things at the interface of culture and nature. My own school then is the School of Social Sciences, um, and uh, that's where I sit in the uh, politics and international relations um, program in that school. Um, and I interface with the Institute for the Study of Social Change. The Institute is headed by uh, Richard Eccleston, and they're doing um, a lot of research relevant to uh, the interface between uh, the interests of TIA um, and, and the college. So that's basically the overall uh, structure. My book was mentioned um, uh, by Jan at the beginning, so uh, it's the political economy of sustainability. It's really the output of about, well, at least 20 years, <laughs> thinking about the intersection between my discipline, my founding discipline, which is political economy, and sustainability or the environment. So what is the relationship between uh, uh, how, how, how nature is theorized, if you like, um, within, uh, within political economy and with how uh, environmentalists slash ecologists have theorized nature in relation uh, to the political and economic world? So, um, in some senses, that book is an output of those other books there. Um, and I have generally tried in my research to investigate, you know, in a sense, why it is um, we don't get the sustainable outcomes um, that we all want from our current political economic system. So this dates right back to my uh, PhD research on the tropical timber trade and why it was that um, an organization that was normally set up to 
um, deal with the problem of tropical deforestation, that was the International Tropical Timber Organization, why it was in fact um, that it, um, it wasn't making any progress. And of course, you know, in the last um, 30 years odd since I wrote that book, we're still seeing large scale tropical deforestation around the world. So in that sense, um, we constantly want to solve the problem of sustainability and we constantly struggle to do so. Why is that? I think the answer goes all the way back to the foundations of political economy as a discipline and the offspin of it then, which is modern economics. If we look at the founding discipline of political economy, um, we can trace it back really to Adam Smith. 1776, The Wealth of Nations. Now, if you read The Wealth of Nations, you will discover actually that there are three founding concepts of value there, um, use value, uh, exchange value, and labor value. And there are different ways of looking at a thing as having value. So we're not talking about, we're not talking about aesthetic values here. We're not talking about ethical values. This is very much an economics focus. It's the notion that a thing has value because it's useful but it can be useful for very different reasons. It can be useful because it serves a use directly for you or a group. It can be useful because you can exchange it for things. It can be useful because there's labor enmeshed in it, embodied in it, and it can be useful for the function it serves to the ecosystem to which it belongs. Function that. So, Coming out of that analysis then, what you can realize, I think, is that an awful lot of what we do, an awful lot of what TIA might do, certainly an awful lot of what the university is currently about, is realizing exchange value. And therein, I think, lies the problem. We're not balancing the four values that inhere in things um, appropriately. We're allowing the uh, exchange value uh, side of things to substantially dominate um, the valuing process, the economic valuing process. How does this tie in with sustainable development, sustainability? Well, sustainability, you know, these are all the diagrams you will see around. And uh, you can see that it's an integrative concept. We have to bring social, environmental, and uh, economic um, values together. And I think if you think about that, we end up um, with this notion of sustainability value. Sustainability value then is an integrative concept of economic value that suggests that a thing has value when it has balanced exchange value, labor value, use value, and function value. In order to get to sustainability value, that you're going to have to bring somehow those, um, those values into a form of a kind of dynamic um, collaborative interaction. We have a political system, however, that doesn't do that. We have a political system that ends up with non-integrated decision making. And so those are just some examples there. The absurdity of cha um, channeling $400 million to save the Great Barrier Reef while doing nothing about the Adani coal mine. The absurdity of do bringing in tax cuts for the rich while being concerned nominally about vulnerable poor and inequalities in Australia, and on the recent absurdity over um, bringing in this Brumby Act in New South Wales, when everyone knows the Brumbies are a serious problem. Won't have time for that. Want to get you to hear. The problem we have is that whether we like it or not, we have a proclivity as humans to locate ourselves at one of the extremes of that tetrahedron. A lot of the time, people are drawing us, telling us we need to focus on exchange value. That's the only value that matters. What's happened recently, and I just have to run through this because we're 
um, need to move quite quickly. What's happened recently, because liberals who love exchange value have got very upset with popular democracy uh, and nationalism. So we've got national populism challenging liberalism through electoral debates um, and results like the Trump administration in the US, um, Brexit in Britain, and so on. What's gone on here is that the overriding or overarching focus of uh, this, our system, which has been liberal, focused on realizing exchange values, is flipping in some countries to a focus on national use values. This is upsetting liberals no end. It's uh, making nationalists very happy, but it's not solving our sustainability problem. Where we need to be is in the middle of that tetrahedron, which means, and this is the key thing, I guess, for the, the uh, meeting here, is it needs forms of collaborative governance. That means we need to bring to people together who represent these four dimensions of value to nut out what a particular, how the, what the value is going to be in a particular context. And there are some examples there of how that can be done, and a lot more of them besides. And what I would argue also is that we do see quite a few um, examples of this going on. So there's a lot of rhetoric around now collaborative governance. Uh, how do you make it happen? Um, the book, of course, explains all that. Um, so I don't like the title either. <laughs> Um, I think we need to rethink the title as well. I think we need to rethink it along the lines that I've outlined. Um, but I do think there are definitely possibilities for deep collaboration between TIA's goal, broadly understood, and the interests of a lot of people in the College of Arts, uh, Law and Education to, uh, to work together collaboratively to work out exactly what way it might be to go but I also think we need to discuss how it's going to be governed. Thank you.